now presentation by Philippe Gambet and Olga. I, I have seen Thierry, yes, in the audience. I don't know if you're present as well. And Dominique Le Gallois, French team, mostly Paris based, uh, who presents about evaluating hierarchical clustering methods, Gaudra with chronological order. So please, Philippe or Olga, uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Simon, for the introduction. I'll be doing the presentation of this uh, work done uh, with uh, Olga, Dominique, and Thierry from uh, Latis. Uh, so the idea is to uh, try to evaluate hierarchical clustering methods for corpora with chronological order. So are we able to detect this chronological order and how? So first, uh, I'll give you some elements of context about this, uh, uh, this question, uh, see when it can uh, happen in digital humanities. Then I'll introduce the two criteria that we propose to evaluate the consistency between the tree that we obtain from a clustering method and a chronological order on the list. Then I'll show you how to find the optimal order for each criterion and evaluate the significance of the obtained results to know whether we expect to have a chronological signal in the data. And finally, I'll conclude with some perspectives as well. So let's start with some elements of context about uh, uh, those clustering uh, situations when we deal with uh, dated data. That's the case here uh, for some novels by uh, Emile Zola that we uh, analyzed. Uh, they are extracted from the seed corpus that uh, Olga will be presenting in the next session, if you're interested. So a natural first step for our purpose here, which was to study the evolution of the idiolect of Emile Zola through uh, his specificities of speech, uh, and of writing, uh, was to first do a hierarchical clustering of the works and see whether we could spot that it was kind of uh, arranged chronologically. Uh, so yeah, I'll let you have a look. Do you think this cl clustering uh, clusters together uh, works which appeared in consecutive years? Well, it seems to be the case in the beginning there. You have the 60s, uh, 80s, uh, uh, 20th century in the end. Um, and so uh, the idea is we want to quantify this. And actually, this question is relevant also for other studies in digital humanities. Uh, here is an example in historical linguistics, where you have uh, a corpus containing works of different periods of time in Old English. And you see that there seems to be something chronological here. Uh, if you put this on top and, uh, uh, well, maybe um, uh, let's see another example uh, here with works by Hugo. Uh, you have the letters on top in this clustering. And again, you see that consecutive years seem to be uh, uh, arranged uh, uh, quite logically in, in the tree when you check the structure. Uh, finally, uh, something in uh, political discourse analysis in the book by Jean-Marc Leblanc, uh, you see that uh, his analysis of the New Year's addresses by French presidents also show that there are some group chronological grouping. Uh, but actually, with these kinds of trees or dendrograms, uh, you may know that it's completely possible to reorder the, the children of one node of the tree. So here, for example, to, to highlight the fact that there is a chronological ordering, we could have put 1978 in between those two periods, where you have the 70s here and the 80s here. And maybe this would have made more clear the fact that there is a chronological evolution. And we could have done some other rearrangements like this in the tree just to visualize better this chronological signal in the tree. And so uh, this is our first problem. How do you do this kind of reordering of the leaves of the dendrogram to best fit with the chronology? So here is an example where you have different dates uh, of the work that we are trying to cluster together. Um, so you see that the, the blue subtree uh, is uh, uh, after the red one. So maybe we should reverse them. Uh, to respect the chronology more. Same thing below, we could reverse 2020, 2021. It's still the same tree, actually, when we do this reversal. It's just that we, yeah, we can exchange uh, the children as we wish for the visualization. So if we exchange, then we get the perfect order of the leaves, chronologically speaking. But in some cases, you don't get a perfect uh, situation. Here, I just exchanged 2018 and 19 in, the, in my tree. And if I do the same uh, tree reversal, subtree reversal here, blue and red, here uh, green and pink, well, 2019 is still uh, annoying. 
And actually, there is no way that I can order 2017, 18, and 19 properly. The structure of the tree uh, makes it impossible. Uh, or you would have to cross branches, and we don't want to do this. We want to have a planar tree, not cr crossing branches. So in this case, it's almost chronological, and maybe the order that I'm giving you here is the best fit with the chronology. And so that's what we, uh, we want to evaluate. Uh, what do we mean by the best fit or almost chronological? Uh, so one criterion that we could uh, use is, uh, let's see here, this leaf 2019. I said the, 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 it's only this leaf which is annoying. If we remove it, it becomes uh, chronological again. And we could do exactly the same with, 2000, uh, with 2018, if we remove it, again, perfect chronological order. And actually, even with 2017, if we remove it, well, here you still have the problem with those two, but you can reverse the two uh, children of this node, and then, again, a perfect chronological order. So the first criterion that we introduce is the number of leaves that you need to delete the minimum number of leaves that you need to delete to get a perfect chronological order when you're allowed to reverse uh, subtree, yeah, so sub, uh, the children of uh, a node of the tree. Um, so here, the, the, the criterion would be uh, it has a score one. You need to remove only one leaf. But let's see another example. If I change 2019, I replace it by 2025. Uh, well, this, I still need to remove only one leaf. But this tree on the left seems to be a bit less good than the one before. I put the one before here on the right. Uh, you see that on the one before, you had nice intervals of years. This interval before this one, before this one. This is not the case anymore here, because here, in the second interval, well, you have this uh, date which is bigger than the ones uh, below. Uh, so it seems that the tree on the left is less consistent with chronology than the one on the right. And we would like to have a criterion to express this. So we introduce the number of conflicts, uh, meaning the number of dates which are not properly ordered uh, considering the chronology. Uh, so here you have three conflicts with 2025. You only have one with 2019. And uh, so those conflicts, to visualize them better, uh, we can use this technique. It's a visualization technique. You put this, the perfect chronological order on the right, you put links when the year is the same on the left and on the right. And actually, you see that the number of conflicts is exactly the number of crossing, the number of crossings in this uh, visualization. Same here. You just count the number of crossings, and I, I, it will give you a visual way to understand where the conflicts are in the next slide. Uh, so our second criterion is the minimum number of conflicts uh, when we try to find the best order to respect the chronological order. So now, how do, ah, first, those criteria are not equivalent. Uh, here, I've ordered a tree. This example is a, a dummy tree. I've under, ordered it uh, to minimize the number of leaves to delete. Compared with the chronology, I need to delete only five leaves. Uh, you see, if I delete the five leaves, sorry, uh, the remaining ones, the black ones, they are in perfect order. And actually, I can't delete less than that. Now, if I count the number of conflicts, so uh, with the techniques I told you with the crossings, I count 20, oh, 22 of them, sorry. Uh, I uh, optimized uh, the order this morning, so 22 co crossings. Uh, now, if I see the second ordering of exactly the same tree, you see here I just changed the ordering. I, I did those three reversals of children, uh, so it's slightly different. Now, I need to remove six leaves. There is no solution where I can remove only five leaves to get the perfectly ordered black leaves. Uh, so it's not optimal. The order of the left was optimal for the number of leaves to delete. But for the number of crossings, it is optimal with 17 crossings only. Uh, so yeah, we have two possible criteria to optimize. And now let's see how we will find the optimal order to uh, optimize those criteria. Actually, well, we uh, implemented two algorithms to find this optimal order. The first one, so minimizing the number of leaves to delete, it's a new dynamic programming algorithm that we introduced, uh, inspired by the longest common, uh, the longest increasing uh, subsequence algorithm. The second one, actually, we reused an algorithm which uh, was uh, designed for bioinformatics two, uh, 10 years ago, so in 2010. 
and both are well, quick enough for the trees that we had. Um, and they are quick enough, especially if each node of the tree has a small number of children. So in the cases I showed you, it was binary tree. Every node has two children. Every internal node has two children. So it was fine. Uh, and so you can uh, download it on GitHub on Olga's uh, account. And uh, uh, you can test it on your own data if you want. Here is what it gives for Zola. Uh, actually, with this order, which is the optimal one, both for the number of leaves to delete, you need only to delete eight leaves. And also for the number of conflicts, uh, there, are, there are only 30 conflicts uh, when we order it this way. And here you see that it's better ordered than on the left. Uh, but are those numbers significantly small or not? Maybe we could uh, uh, obtain them by, ch by chance. Uh, like, uh, with any random tree, we could delete only eight leaves. And uh, among the 35 leaves, well, we get by chance a perfect chronological order. So let's evaluate how, how good this is. Um, so uh, actually, we use a, a random uh, uh, simulation procedure. Uh, to simulate randomly uh, orders and see whether we can get the same uh, number either of leaves to delete or of conflicts. So this is the equivalent of a p-value um, that, we, that we compute with the simulation. And uh, so it helps us to decide whether it's uh, uh, possible that we obtain it by chance or not. Uh, so to provide the trees uh, as input, we have to code it in the Nurix parenthesis format. And uh, you can get uh, this simulation with the uh, 1,000 1, uh, simulated uh, random orderings. In this case, you see that there are only 30 conflicts for Zola. So it's much less than the, the best random order that we found. So uh, it's very likely that, that there is a, a, a chronological signal and it's not due by chance. So I conclude uh, to summarize that we introduced two criteria to evaluate whether a tree is consistent with an order of the leaves or whether it could be caused by chance also to evaluate that. Uh, we have a practical tool in Python to find an optimal order on the leaves uh, and to yeah, best reflect the order which is given as input. So maybe this will uh, provide you a new tool uh, or method for textual data analysis when you have a chronological signal in your data. And there are still uh, practical and uh, theoretical uh, uh, things to investigate. For example, a more direct way to measure the chronological signal in textual data some algorithmic aspects, especially with uh, some colleagues of my lab, the NP hardness of some problems when the number of children is not uh, limited, and uh, a mathematical formula to avoid doing simulations and instead to be able to uh, directly evaluate the probability to obtain it by chance, those two uh, criteria. So thanks for your attention, and uh, don't hesitate if you have some questions.